it's good to be on your way to come your way again this afternoon and i want to thank as many that are following again in this um, series of bible study uh, this is and um, it is moment of reflections and like i said last week we will be looking at series of teachings of jesus christ teaching that are centered on jesus uh, reflecting on the uh, because the center uh, message of the whole bible is jesus christ himself jesus christ is the center of the message of the scripture right from the old testament down to the new testament so as we talk about moment, moment of reflections there are things that um, you might have known you might have heard or some things you need to know about jesus and the messages of jesus and of course i started last week on the keys to a blessed life and of course that took us to matthew chapter 5 reading from verses 1 to 12 and there we have eight blessedness of someone that is blessed by god someone that is favored by god and um, like i as the first aspect i talk about the beatitudes and this the beatitudes is what where we have this uh eight blessedness of a person that is favored by the almighty god and i established also last week that uh that this blessing is meant for the side Matthew chapter 5 in that Matthew chapter 5 that when Jesus Christ when he saw the multitudes he went to the mount and the disciples came to him and it was only the disciples that came to him he began to declare these words to and of course I give other examples uh, of um, the disciples coming to meet Jesus Christ uh, in Matthew chapter 24 well, after he has, has spoken so many things in Matthew 23, you know, down to the beginning of that Matthew 24 about uh, the end time, that um, the uh, temple of Jerusalem shall be trodden down, and uh, some other things that begin to happen. And they came to Jesus and said, tell us when shall these things be? What shall be the signs of your coming and the end of the world? And Jesus Christ took time to explain uh, what we call the eschatological studies today and that is the events of the end time and um, we have the same example in March chapter 13 that um, after he has narrated the parables of the sowers it was these disciples that came to Jesus and Jesus was able to expand it and give them the meaning of the parable of the sowers the multitude that he spoke to never bothered about <clears throat> the uh, the meaning or the deep uh, knowledge that Jesus Christ wanted them to have it was only the disciples so you can see that in the church today uh, there are two kinds of people those that are just mere multitudes and those that are true disciples and the is calling every one of us every Christian to be true disciples in Jesus Christ now I can go on and go on and I said that to be a disciples you need to change your position you need to change your position there is a need to live the valley life to come to the mountain top you have to live the valley life to come to the mountain and that is what the disciples did so for as many that want to know more about God there is a need for them to change 
the place or the level where they are. And I said, climbing mountain is never uh, an easy thing. So it's not an easy thing. Let's use another example today, and that is about Abraham, the father of faith. Abraham, the father of faith. And you see that Abraham, the father of faith, the Lord God that he began to go. It was after the third day, he lifted up his eyes and he saw a mountain, which is now called the Mount of Moriah. It was on the mountain of Moriah when he wanted to obey God. A place of meeting with God personally like a mountain top like that is a place you are a secluded place where you will hear God, where you have personal relationship with God. And that is exactly what our experience of Abraham was. It was a learned obedience and God tested his obedience. And it was there also that God did the miracle uh, in which a ram was provided instead of Isaac that he wanted to use for sacrifice. And that is why it came across, you know, we came across the name Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. And I like always teach that every uh, name that is given to God in the Bible, <clears throat> in the Greek or in the, uh, in the Jewish word, uh, language, when you say Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rafika, you know, Jehovah Jireh, God the provider, Jehovah Nisi, God the leader of the banner, Jehovah Rafika, God the healer, Jehovah the healer, and so on and so forth. We call this redemptive names of God. Redemptive names of God. And it might interest you that all this name, there was no one that God called himself. It was men that encountered God at one time or the other that gave God these accolades, that gave God this a kind of what you can call a, an honor, you know, an award, and say, God, for this you are Jehovah Jireh. And when God fought battle, you know, for, uh, for, for uh, Jehoshaphat in those days, that is where you see God as Jehovah, you know, a, a Nisi, the leader of the banner. You see God as Jehovah. Obedience is a valid place. A place that you take a decision for God. For example, the Bible says, multitude in the valley of the decision. So, you see that you are going to the multitude, you see them in the valley. On the mountain, they are the people who have said to the glory of God. They are the people men and women who had an encounter with God. So, Abraham, the father of faith, in this uh, uh, scripture, you know, encounter God. And so, people of God, before you can enjoy the as we have been, there is a need for you to leave where you are and come to a place of personal relationship with God, a place of encounter with God, a place that you to meet God and um, you will now be talking about God that you know personally, not the God that somebody is showing to you. It's what it means, you know, to have and meet God at the mountain top. Now, in that mountain, from that verse one, the Bible says that they met Jesus Christ on the mountain to tell them. The first thing that Jesus said is, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. I mentioned that briefly, you know, last week, that the poor in spirit. How can somebody receive the blessings of God? How can the disciples be blessed of God? A disciple to be blessed of God, such a disciple must separate himself and to be have a kind of a heart. Poor in spirit is talking about a person heart, a easily entreated, a person who understands and realizes, you know, his emptiness. Who is somebody who, who spirit, not somebody that is trying to uh, uh, um, uh, justify his error, not somebody who wants to uh, rationalize. Whatever it does, the wrong thing that it does, but who wants to own up to God? Somebody who wants to tell God, God, I am wrong. God, I need you. I cannot help myself. That is 
the poor in spirit. So the poor in spirit is not for for example, we say somebody is poor, where I say that that person is in need. So that person is destitute of uh, maybe the, 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 the things of life. That is the people we refer to the poor in the world. But we are talking about poor in spirit, not poor physically. These are the people who discover that they are destitute of God in their life. They lack, you know, a, a personal relationship with God. And such people, when they own up to God, in their error, justifying their sins, God is going to meet with them. That is what it means to be poor. You are not proud. You are not arrogant. And such a person, the Bible says, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And when we talk about the kingdom of heaven, it's talking about, you know, uh, uh, having his, his spirit infused into your life. And that is what we call eternal life. So the kingdom uh, is talking about the sense of God. Everything that the gospel represents to the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus Christ taught us to pray. He said we should pray thy kingdom come, thy will be and that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So when you have the kingdom, you are having uh, uh, the, the wholeness, you know, of what heaven represents. Just like that song, heaven came down and glory fill my soul. Now, very quickly, the point number two. In the next verse there, if you read on in that verse um, four, it says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, there is comfort for the mourners. We are not talking about somebody who lost his father or who lost his mother or who lost his relative. Of course, that is a condition of mourning. That is the condition of mourning nobody that loses a precious person that will even for those who find themselves in that situation the comfort of the Holy Spirit is the only thing that can sustain them the comfort of the Holy Spirit you know that can help them I know at this time the world is mourning because people are dying as a result of sickness as a result of the pandemic that is happening the Dying, lost ones, you know, have been lost. You know, have been loved ones have been lost, are dying. And of course, it's a kind of money. It's a kind of money. Uh, but going back to is also talking about which is the main thing. For they shall be comforted. The money here of spiritual work with God as a disciple the opportunity that will give you uh, 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 the grace to receive the blessings of God, the blessedness of uh, a child of God that God has prepared for his own people. Now, you see, in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, he said, proclaim, if you're reading from verse 1, he said, the Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind to proclaim liberty to the country them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort to appoint unto them that money Zion to give them for arches the oil of joy for money the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord. Beautiful scriptures there. He said that God is to comfort those that mourn in Zion and also to appoint them to give them beauty and oil of joy for money. People of God, there is what we call, you know, oil of joy for those who mourn. And uh, the category of mourners that the Bible is talking about here, to mourn is to feel sorry for our wrong and repent. The money the Bible is talking about is, that is when somebody discover his life, discover his situation, discover the position he finds himself, and such a person. Many people today cannot be born again. Because they don't repent. Because 
is an act of is an act to feel sorry for our wrongs to feel sorry for the evil that we have committed repent acts chapter 3 verse 9 they say repent ye therefore repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the time of refreshing will come from the presence of the lord when somebody repent pain to feel sorry to mourn for the wrong that you have done and you you take a drastic change you turn from that direction and the bible says from that wrong way that you are going as a result as a, a sign of repentance the bible says such a person shall be shall receive refreshing shall receive refreshing that is comfort from god so you can see example that we can see is for someone to feel sorry for his wrong and to repent and also number two to mourn is when we we own God with fasting. A man that is fasting, fasting is a sign of mourning. Whatever makes a man to fast, you fast because you humble your soul, you mourn. There is something that you are not satisfied with. There is a situation you are not happy with. You want God's intervention. You want God to turn it around. That is a sign of money. So fasting, whatsoever, you want God. Whether you are a Christian, you are in the ministry, you want to turn around a change in what has, has committed to your hands or in your business, you are not happy the way your business is going on or here you are, there is a, a situation you find yourself, you are in debt, you are in one problem or the other. Now, when you, when you fast, God say, turn to me with fasting. And of course, a man that is fasting is money and God says they shall be comforted. And I believe that if there is anything that we need in our confronting the world, that the Bible says in the book of um, uh, uh, chapter 7, verse 14, he said, If my people are called by my name and pray and seek my face and turn from I will. I will forgive them their sins and I will heal their land. Around believers, Christians, around the world, what we need now is to mourn before God. To fast. No, it is our sin. It is our wrong. We are all wrong because even those who are born again, maybe some people into homosexual into lesbianism maybe they would have been converted a long long time if we have done what we're supposed to do as the church of jesus christ on the surface of the earth but the church also has failed but this time around god has promised it the only hope that our world have is the believers that we mourn that we repent before god and for people in nations also government people in authority when they know now that technology has failed uh, medical uh, science has failed. The only thing that remains is for pain. When people humble themselves, the Bible says comfort will come our way. And I pray as we do this that the Lord will have mercy upon our world. God will have mercy upon you, will have mercy upon me, will have mercy upon our family. And the pandemic, the Lord God Almighty will cause it, uh, you know, to be removed. The Lord God Almighty will cause his wind to blow it away. When we mourn, there is always a room for comfort. And the last point I'm going to make, to mourn is ways of repentance, a sense of feeling the pains of people. This time around, when you see somebody that is hungry, you, 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 when you feel the pain of that person, it's a sign of money. And when you find yourself in that situation, God loves such people. And God is going to comfort them because by the time we lift up such people in prayers or in our heart, God is ready to bring the turnaround. As I bring this study today to a close, we have considered the poor spirit having the blessing of the kingdom. Who more comfort from the All God Almighty? And as we have read in Isaiah uh, chapter 61, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is one of the purpose why He came. 
He said to give to those who are mourning, to give uh, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the righteousness of God, the planting of the Lord, that they that uh, He, the Almighty God, might be glorified. I pray for you that as we change our condition of heart by submitting ourselves to God and following Jesus as true disciples, this time around ready to pay the price of a true disciple, living the value by counter God. And as we put these practices uh, into our daily living, not justifying ourselves, humbling ourselves with prayer, with fasting, I believe in your situation, things God is going to intervene in our land God will intervene in your family God will intervene and things that it seems that we don't even have solution for God is going to sort us out I pray father in the name of Jesus for as many that are in the name of Jesus Christ this is the, the uh, sharing for today Bible study join me again next week by the grace of God when we are going